What's up guys, I'm Ryan B, this is Right Tech Gaming, and in this video we're taking a look at the OBS Bot Tiny Cam. Now full disclosure, the company Remo AI did reach out to me to make a video review for you guys about this camera, however that is not going to affect my review in any way. I'm going to let you guys know the good stuff, the bad stuff, and I'm even going to compare it to other very popular webcams on the market to see which one is good and which one is worth your money. I did however ask them to send me out two of these cameras, one so I can keep and hoard for myself because I have a problem, and the other one's going to be for one of you guys because you guys are all so cute. So make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end of the video where I'm going to show you how to enter to win one of these cameras and just a heads up you're definitely going to want to enter to win because these cameras are pretty darn nice. So the tiny cam is an AI powered PTZ camera and what PTZ stands for is it can pan tilt or zoom. So within the camera itself it's got a two axis gimbal built in to where it can pan and tilt and of course the zoom feature is added in there as well. However what really stood out about this camera and why I really wanted to get my hands on it was the AI powered functionality that it has. So it's got two different main functions with the AI powered. So one is you can watch for hand gestures. So you got two different hand gestures to trigger two different things. The first one being zooming in and zooming out. So with an L hand gesture, it can zoom in or zoom out depending on which one it's setting currently. And of course, the other one is going to be tracking you around. So it locks onto your face and then it'll track you around your room in almost full 360 degrees. And for me, that sounded pretty cool. It's something that I wanted to have for my streams, something that I just wanted to have because it just seemed cool. And I have to say that it works pretty well, but we'll get into more of that here in a minute. So everything you get inside the box is going to be the camera itself right here and you can see the pan and tilt functionality of it you also get a typical webcam stand however this one's a little bit different in the fact that it's got a metal bar here which magnetizes to the bottom it's also got a little sticky section right here in case you wanted to fix this permanently i don't know why they put that there instead of just a non-slip kind of section but that is there in case you wanted to do that and lastly it came with a usb-c to usb power cable however on the back side of this camera you can see that it's got a dc port as well as the usb-c port so I didn't get any DC power in the box, but you do get the USB, which is pretty much all you need. So as far as stats go, the camera itself is gonna be 1080p at 30 frames per second. However, 1080p out of one webcam is not equal to 1080p out of another webcam. So I did stack it up against a couple of other webcams in similar price points, so that way you guys can see the image quality and compare them yourself to see which one you like the most and which one was better overall. Another thing to be aware of, it does say 30 frames per second at 1080p on paper. However, I was able to push this thing up to 60 frames per second in OBS, so I'm not really sure where the disconnect there was but on paper it is 1080p at 30 and then 720p at 60 frames per second so lastly there is some gesture controls one for zooming and then another one for face tracking and you have the ai functionality as well built in to kind of watch for those gestures and to track you around your room and lastly it's got the two axis gimbal for panning and then tilting and that's it as far as stats go Build quality though, this thing is very, very robust. I have pulled a Linus a few times and dropped this thing. I would not recommend that, but it does hold up pretty well even when dropping it. It is plastic construction besides the base, which is all metal. It's even got some metal plates there. It does have a screw section to mount it to any sort of mounts that you may have if you don't want to use this or just lay it there on your desk. Now all the stats and build quality is all really nice, but of course you want to see exactly how it looks and exactly how it stacks up against other webcams. So let's go ahead and check that out. So in this setup, I have three different cameras going against each other. I have the OBS Bot Tiny Cam at the top, then I have the Logitech Stream Cam at the bottom left and the Logitech Brio at the bottom right. Now all these cameras are very comparable in price points to one another. So that's why I decided to put these three specifically against each other and not add in any other ones like the C920. It's a lot cheaper than the rest of these cameras. So as far as a lighting setup, it's the same across the board. I have two bright lights on the wall beside me, and then I have a main fill light in front of me lighting up my face. And as you can see with the lighting, the Brio is definitely the most blown out out of the three options compared to the stream cam and the tiny cam. However, with this setup, I do think that the tiny cam has the best look with this lighting setup. You can also tell right off the bat is each one has a different kind of color profile. The Brio is slightly more green. The stream cam is slightly more red and the tiny cam I think has the best color options out of the three. The other thing that I noticed about the tiny cam that I don't see in the other two is the tiny cam has slight reflections from these bright wall lights that I have going that I do not notice in the other two cameras. So I will turn off the wall lights and then just have the light in front of me lighting up my face to see the lighting differences between the three cameras. And again, the Brio is definitely the most blown out option out of the three. The tiny cam looks slightly a little bit blown out and the stream cam probably handles it the best out of those three options. However, when we turn off all the lights and the only light that I have going is my monitor light, the stream cam, you cannot see me at all. The Brio is pretty good, but overall, I think the tiny cam takes it for this test in the lowest light. And we'll go ahead and turn the wall lights back on and kind of see exactly which ones look. Again, I have to say the tiny cam kind of holds different lighting settings better than the other two options. And this is the setup where I have the main light and then the wall lights going. So this is my normal setup. And again, out of the three options, for sure, I like the tiny cam, the look 
over all of them. Now there is one thing to be aware of with these cameras. You can go in and individually set up each of these cameras differently for different settings. So in case I want to take the Brio and turn that brightness down, because it is definitely overblown with these stock settings, you can do that and you can make each one of these cameras look a lot better. And here's exactly how I made each one look with a little bit of setup in each camera. And this right here is all three cameras after I did a little bit of setup in each different camera to kind of optimize it for my lighting setup and it makes each camera look a whole lot better. To me, it definitely takes the Brio from a really bad looking camera to a really, really nice looking camera. And I think it puts it on par with the tiny cam. However, out of all three, I definitely think that the tiny cam looks the best but you guys let me know in the comment section down below which one you like the look of the best. So that right there is the visuals of each different camera. However, I know you want to see exactly how the tracking and hand gestures work. So let's go ahead and roll that clip as well. So this right here is the first hand gesture where you put up an L with your fingers and it'll zoom in and you do it again and it zooms out. It's pretty simple, it works pretty fast. It catches it most of the time unless you're really far away. And then the tracking itself actually works pretty darn well. And I think it's a really cool function that I love playing around with. It finds exactly where your face is and it kind of tracks it pretty well. As you can see, I'll kind of run around my room quite a bit just to try to see how far I can get and how much of the room it'll start to follow me around and how fast I can get before it loses track. So right here, I wanted to see exactly how fast and how well the tracking would work when you're zoomed in and you can outrun it and it does get a little wobbly when it's zoomed in if you're moving really fast. And if you kind of zoom your face out of the whole frame too fast, then it won't know where to go. So it just kind of stops tracking until you get back into the frame. So that right there, guys, is the tracking feature in this camera and exactly how it works. And to me, that was the most interesting feature and why I really wanted to get my hands on this camera. And I think it works pretty darn well. There's only a few issues that I ran into where if I was too far away from the camera, it was hard to pick up those hand gestures. Or if I was right in front of a really bright light, I had a few issues picking up those hand gestures as well. The other issue that I ran into is if it was zoomed in, I could easily outpace the tracking, which is kind of to be expected. But when you're zoomed out and you got the full view, then it's a lot harder to run out of the tracking. Of course you can if you're going really fast or jumping in and out of the frame you can outpace the tracking there as well but for the most moving around and that kind of stuff is going to track you perfectly fine now if the tracking is worth it for you guys it's going to be up to you i like anything that's a little bit extra that does something that other people aren't really doing and what i think is really powerful for streamers because i know most of the time you're just going to be sitting there and not really moving around the room however what you can do this for is you can zoom in with the camera and have it track your face around in case you do any sort of reactions so in case something crazy happens in your stream and you want to react to it you can have the camera zoom in and track your face around for the subtle movements and they'll pick it up there which i think is a really cool added effect that you can do with this camera. So this camera is gonna run you $200, which is not cheap by any means, and it does put it on par exactly with the Logitech Brio. However, in my opinion, the video quality you get out of this is better than the Brio in most lighting conditions, and the fact that you get that added AI bonus with the tracking and the hand gesture control is pretty cool in my opinion. So better video quality and more features for the same price is always good. Secondly, the other option is the Logitech Stream Cam, which is slightly less expensive. However, the company did reach out to me and offer a discount code for you guys, and that'll be in the description down below that'll put it on par with the Logitech Stream Cam price. And of course, guys, lastly, as I told you before in the earlier parts of this video, if you watch all the way through to the end of the video, I would show you how to enter to win one of these cameras. So all you have to do is like this video, comment down below why you want to win, and then go into the description of the video, find my Twitter account, and then retweet the tweet that I put out about this video, and then you are entered to win. I will be doing the drawing on my stream which again is in the description of the video here at the end of the month so definitely tune in and check that out and while you're here click on some relevant content